Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwall Pictures. Today I wanted to take a look at Leos Carrick's 1991 film, The Lovers on the Bridge, and break down why I think it should be considered essential viewing for anyone interested in filmmaking or any cinephile out there. The story follows Dennis Levant and Juliette Binoche as Alex and Michelle, a pair of homeless people who fall in love while living on the oldest bridge in Paris while it's closed off to the general public for construction. This is actually Levant's third time playing the Alex character in a Leos Carrick film after Boy Meets Girl and Mauvais Song, though in truth it's more like three variations on a base character rather than actually being the exact same character three times. There is no continuity from film to film. The Lovers on the Bridge is an incredible piece of work, easily one of the best films of the 90s and arguably of all time. This is one film that I always consider a major omission when it isn't included on those big retrospective top films lists, like the BFI Sight and Sound poll that came out recently. The Lovers on the Bridge not being on there is a mistake to me. This is a character-driven drama, and both Alex and Michelle are complex, layered, and magnetic screen presences. They have skills and faults, strengths and shortcomings, raw artistic talent, and debilitating injuries both internal and external. I think this film has the power to go a long way in terms of humanizing homeless people in the eyes of some less empathetic or cold-hearted individuals. Lots of people, and more broadly society as a whole, often others the homeless, or even worse, labels them as less than human, or not worth helping or even protecting. We see it all the time in the media. Often labeling unhoused individuals as criminals, even though they are often more at risk of being victims than they are of being perpetrators. The Lovers on the Bridge is especially resonant in that it doesn't sugarcoat anything. Its characters aren't perfect, morally just sages. They are flawed, damaged people in dire circumstances, abandoned by a society they no longer feel like they are a part of. The Lovers on the Bridge showcases the struggles and hardships of life as a homeless person without flinching away from the mental health struggles, desperate measures, or substance abuse that other films might make an effort to sanitize if they shared the same goal. The Lovers on the Bridge doesn't shy away from presenting its characters in a negative light or showing them do questionable or outright bad things, never losing sight of the fact that they're humans trying to get by in the toughest of circumstances. There's a certain beauty to the way these characters are able to reclaim the city for themselves at night after everyone else has gone to sleep, but there's also a profound sadness along with it. That pairing of beauty juxtaposed against melancholy is a duality that permeates this entire film down to its bones. They are only able to enjoy the city when they are the only ones in it. I love how Carrick's presents the romance in The Lovers on the Bridge. This isn't some kind of picturesque storybook romance, and all is not perfect. Their relationship is dangerously codependent and unhealthy, and there's a fair bit of scummy manipulation at play from Alex. But the relationship feels authentic all the same, and there is a sweetness to their love, however unsustainable and inevitably unhealthy it may be. Visually speaking, The Lovers on the Bridge is exquisite. The vast majority of the film consists of exteriors, which is an added challenge to the filmmaking process, and the camera work is vibrant and so full of life, finding moments of visual splendor amongst the squalor. The fireworks sequence at the midpoint isn't just the visual highlight of the film, but goes beyond that to become a true landmark achievement in filmmaking. The coordination involved behind the scenes is simply mind-boggling and is infinitely more impressive to me than any CGI-filled sky portal spectacle. It's a testament to what can be pulled off practically, whereas many filmmakers might say it could only be done with CGI. I think this scene fully deserves to be counted amongst the finest scenes ever shot. It perfectly displays that certain transcendent quality that film has over other mediums. It's a perfect marriage of sight and sound, of music and motion, of story and character and place and time and theme and emotion, all meshing together as something purely cinematic that could never be captured so brilliantly and so perfectly in an image, song, or book on their own. I do take one minor issue with the film, but it gets into some spoiler territory, so let me do a little spoiler-free wrap-up first. 
and say that The Lovers on the Bridge is a special cinematic achievement that deserves all acclaim and adulation it has received, along with far more attention. The film seems to have been especially well-received amongst filmmakers, more so than film critics. I've noticed it making frequent appearances on the favorite and best movies lists of many excellent filmmakers, while rarely ever appearing on the top lists of critics or audience-aggregated top lists. There's something to be said about The Lovers on the Bridge connecting the most with filmmakers, and it's a piece of work that I cannot really recommend highly enough. This is the point where I'm now going to get into some spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen The Lovers on the Bridge yet, go do that. My one issue with the film, and it is a pretty minor one, is that I was no longer rooting for the romance by the end of the film. On its own, that is not a problem. For the most part, the film simply presents things and allows the viewer to form their own opinions and takeaways. But when it comes to the romance, I got the distinct feeling that Carrick's was trying to tell me how to feel a little bit, whether that was actually his intention or not. For me, Alex crosses a number of unacceptable lines and I was no longer rooting for Michelle to wind up with him by the end. I was rooting for her to get far, far away from him and live up to her potential in life. The fact that she does give in and lovingly heads away with him at the end kind of sours things for me in the film's closing minutes. Now, I want to be crystal clear about this. My issue isn't with Alex doing any of these things, or even with them ending up together. My issue is with the movie seemingly telling me it's a good thing that they're back together and that this is a happy ending. The way the resolution is shot, paced, and edited, the performances and the music choices all point towards this being a favorable, good, outcome, whereas I think it's really quite tragic for Michelle. That character kind of gets short shrift to the benefit of her counterpart in what feels like something of a wish-fulfillment way for Alex that the rest of the film rightly is devoid of. Again, this isn't a huge issue, and if I want to give it the benefit of the doubt, there might be a way to interpret that ending as non-literal. Perhaps it was actually a murder-suicide when he hurled them both off the side of the bridge into the freezing water, and what happens afterwards with the fishing boat is just Alex's escape into fantasy in his dying moments. There's not really any indication of that within the film, but if that is the case, then that's an ending I can get on board with much more, and I just might make that my official headcanon for the film. At any rate, it's a small flaw in what I otherwise consider to be a perfect movie. Subscribe to Brickwall Pictures if you want more stuff like this and all kinds of other movie-related content. I'll see you next time. So long.